piece I put forward for this award is one titled A Mountain is Harder to Climb Than You Think. This piece came about from a journey I took and a project I took on with a very good friend of mine, an artist called Jonathan Fremantle. And Jonathan's work is a lot to do with going into the mountains and taking on nature in the most reverie-filled way possible. And so he pitched this idea to me and I was foolish enough to say, you know what, let's do it. And so we drove for about five hours north of Edinburgh up to a place called the Bone Caves. Um, we took his sons with us to do 10 and 13 at the time. This was late last year, November, I think, 2021. And we took this journey and we got to the sort of the location where we we're gonna start the walk. And I had to help put this pack onto his back. It was loaded up with three paintings, three sculptures and his full studio. So no, no mean feat. Anyway, we got about halfway up this, this glen and you know, big steep valley, either side, water down the middle, it was beautiful. Uh, and he sort of perched up because on this rock because he was just absolutely knackered. Uh, and the sky was quite overcast and it was a bit cold and drizzly. And, and he took a seat and he was just wonderfully framed by these surroundings. Uh, and he looked, he was looked down at his boys and sort of realized, oh Christ, I've got to try and look somewhat <laughs> put together at this point. Uh, but also was just so knackered having done this much of the war carrying all of his weight. And so I got that photo and it's it that point where he's taken a seat and is just looking spent, really. Um, I called the sort of the agony and the ecstasy of the man because he is clearly deeply happy to be in this moment, but is suffering to be there. And that sort of diaphorism is quite interesting. I hope you like it. I'm Lorna Somerville and this self-portrait was started last summer just after we discovered we were going to have to self-isolate for 10 days instead of going on holiday. So it's just acrylic on cardboard because that's all I had lying around in the flat we were staying in over the summer and it's me looking out of the window. I think what saved us was a family of house martins that had moved into the eaves of the flat we were staying in over the summer and just their energy and their positivity was the best distraction and I wondered whether this was a, a great excuse for me to go to my favourite second-hand furniture shop and pick up a second-hand frame. I could easily cut the cardboard to fit the frame and this might be a great money-saving idea for me in the future. However, we had to take a break about now. We found out we had an offer accepted on a house and we were going to have to pack up. So just as hundreds of migrating birds were arriving at Toryburn, our local walk, we were getting ready to leave. I didn't really get a chance to finish the painting until five months later when I was finally able to unpack all my art stuff. I knew I wanted to change the background. There was a flag in the background that just happened to be on the wall of the children's bedroom that I was sitting in, but it was too much. So I decided to change it to a neutral grey and I sorted out the cardigan. I've recently been working on a version of the goldfinch by Fabricius, which is a wild bird chained to a perch and stuck indoors which is a situation I kind of can appreciate now. Hi there, my name's Les Donaghy and welcome to my studio here in East Kilbride. I'm very fortunate to have a fairly large studio space attached to our house. And uh, here is where I painted this year's entry for the Scottish Portrait Awards, which you can probably just see over my left shoulder. Uh, the painting is called Breakthrough, and it's inspired by the sitter, a good friend of mine by the name of George. George is a very skilled carpenter joiner. He works mainly in the building trade and is very unhappy with that kind of lifestyle, especially as he gets a wee bit older. He started during lockdown to make these incredible sculptures, animated figures almost, um, out of firstly cardboard and then overlaying that with fiberglass. They're truly works of art and for me this was George's chance to get out of the building trade and actually make a name for himself as a sculptor or a maker of figures in some way. To me 
this was his breakthrough. But not only that, it shows that for anyone, uh, this kind of breakthrough is totally possible. I'm Kit Martin and my photograph is called Mary. This double exposure, along with some other experimental double exposures, I made when I was up on Lewis earlier this year for 10 days as part of the Island Darkroom Residency Programme. It gave me time and space to think about projects and also to make good use of my intrepid 4x5 camera, which is behind me here, which I took out into the landscape. Um, it was challenging because it was windy and rainy, um, but I, I did enjoy using it and as well as the 210 lens that's on it, I also made use of this pinhole board that I've bought from Intrepid. So quite a bit of experimenting. The photograph Mary is the result of a portrait that I took of Mary Law, my host. And it's double exposed with the interior of the Bothy pod that was my home for the, the time that I spent on Lewis. I'm Harriet Selkirk. I'm an Edinburgh-based artist. I paint and photograph people. The portraits that I create don't always show a face. Often our bodies, our hands and our feet can reveal so much more about us than we realise. Sometimes the everyday things we do are the most expressive. In my photographic portrait of Richard Jobson, you see his hands. He tells me about a voyage important to his heritage across the sea from Germany to Scotland. My name's Michael Yeld, I'm a portrait painter based in Edinburgh. My painting it was selected for the Scottish Portrait Awards. It's a painting you can see directly behind me. And it's of my partner, Alessia, and my daughter, Olivia. So the idea was taken from uh, something I'd seen on social media or I've seen uh, mothers posting while they were nine months pregnant and then nine months later when the baby was nine months old. So I, I thought I'd try and explore that in a painted version. So Alessia was pregnant during the first lockdown. It was quite stressful and we wasn't even sure that I was going to be there for the birth because a few weeks before Olivia was due uh, the fathers weren't allowed to be there uh, he had to wait in the car park so <laughs> waiting for some news off one of the nurses <laughs> the midwives but luckily they changed the rules uh, yeah just before Olivia was born Hi, my name is Conor Draycott and this is the portrait of my grand that I entered into the Scottish Portrait Awards. I chose this photo of my grand to paint for practice at first, but I was happy with how it was turning out. I like the forward-facing composition and I painted a lot rougher, spending only about two days on it over the space of a week. I was looking at techniques from John Singer Sargent to Lucian Freud. I was watching videos and tutorials and I tried to use it in my own painting. The painting was done from a photograph taken at the beach on a day out with my family and Gran who was up from England. I changed the background to give it a more classical portrait look as that's the style I was going for. I started painting at the end of the first lockdown where I've practiced every day since then. I paint portraits, landscapes and still lifes. I also take commissions and sell some original works here and there. I'll be joining Glasgow Art School in September of this year and I'm grateful to have my portrait of my grand chosen and shortlisted for the Scottish Portrait Awards and I'm excited to see it in the exhibition. My name's Neil Cunning and I'm painting in this year's uh, Scottish Portrait Awards. This is my studio which is really just a corner of the living room where I paint in the evenings um, and this is my painting, which is all friends of mine, Jerry. The painting itself is made from a very reduced palette of colours. Cadmium red, uh, yellow ochre, uh, ivory black, ultramarine blue and uh, alizarin crimson. I use the alizarin a lot to redraw the painting at midway in order to kind of find the kind of freshness of the sketch and um, 
And that's really important to me in, in, in trying to maintain some of that. Record time lapses of many of my paintings. Of course, just so happened that this one is not recorded apart from some small pieces, but you can see a very similar painting being painted now. And that's something of my, my, my working process. A big thank you to uh, the SPA for including my painting in this year's um, exhibition and finalist and for the paintings I had in the long list. Um, so I, mean, I really appreciate it. Um, my name's Rosie Bigger. Um, I usually work under the name Rosie School. I'm from Edinburgh, but I've lived in Glasgow for the past uh, three years. I work mostly as a music photographer um, in central Scotland. I started taking music photos because um, when I was younger, everyone around me and all my friends started joining bands and I'm not the kind of person to ever go up on stage but I'm definitely a creative person so I started taking photos for them for fun and then that ended up just being something I realised that I liked doing. I mostly shoot a 35mm film. Uh, recently I've been shooting a lot of black and white film. So my entry um, into the Scottish Portrait Awards this year is a portrait of um, Rob Schofield from Preskate. Um, I met Rob um, when I was on tour with Walt Disco, um, a band based in Glasgow. Um, they were on a UK tour and Preskate were the tour support. Um, so I saw them play like every night of the tour. Like Rob on stage, like him as a front man, like completely commanded my attention. He's unreal to shoot. Like every night I, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna shoot tonight. And he would get on stage and I couldn't help myself. Like the way, like his energy on stage is just like nothing I've ever seen before. My name is Samuel Swachow. I'm based in Glasgow and originally from Ghana. I specialize in hyperrealism and I'm mostly self-thought. My interest in hyperrealism really started off as a challenge to myself. Um, I've seen some works by some really good contemporary hyperrealists and that really inspired me. I was also inspired by some of the works of the uh, old masters. Um, for my works, I usually use graphite, charcoal, carbon and occasionally colored pencils. Most of my works have been portraits, but every now and then I like to explore other themes and other ideas. Some of my works, for instance, are based on sea creatures or marine creatures and, and how they interact with ocean pollutants. I was extremely glad to have been shortlisted for the Scottish Portrait Award. The title of the work that was selected is Looking, and it's particularly important to me as it is a portrait of my sister. And I captured her in the really pensive mood. It was just some days before a very important exams in her law school. She, she seemed to be looking at something, but nothing in particular. My sister's been a very important figure when it comes to me and my artistic endeavour. She's one of the people who always encouraged me to pursue my passion for art. Growing up in Ghana, I suppose I didn't have a lot of support when it comes to delving into art and trying to explore my passion for art. But I was lucky to have some people, a few people like my sister, who urged me on. I'm very glad I get to share this portrait of her with a lot of people and I hope in some ways it's to acknowledge how impactful she's been in my life and to show how grateful I am. Hi, my name is Kenny Gordon. I'm a photographer based in Glasgow. Uh, I take my camera everywhere and shoot a wide range of subjects from portraits, landscapes to street. But the subject closest to my heart is capturing moments with family. My entry to the Scottish Portrait Awards is called What's for Dinner? And it's a shot of my son Brodie with his friend Oscar who'd came over for a play date. On this day they were making pizzas and the image captures them looking over the worktop to check if their pizzas were ready 
as they were getting a bit impatient. I think it just captured the, the moment and the day perfectly. Capturing family photos is important to me and to future generations. I think it helps connect those who came before us. It can bring a lot of happiness. I think as well it can help deal um, with loss. You know, it's a kind of comfort to see photos. I sometimes wish I had more photos from my childhood or family gatherings. And maybe that's what drives me to capture these moments, just the fear of forgotten days in the future. My images are sometimes simple moments on simple days, otherwise forgotten, but now captured forever. Hi, my name's Paul Hartfield. I'm a freelance photographer, um, and I have been for 25 years or so now. And I'm here just to talk you through my uh, nomination for the Scottish Portrait of the Year Award 2022, which is this one. This is Lenny Lachlan outside his family home, Slew White, just on the edge of the Highlands near Morrishia. He was shot for a book. I worked in collaboration um, between lockdowns with a local writer, Moira Dennis. This is the book, The Register. Uh, it's 20 short stories with 20 colour portraits taken by me and the first one in the book is a colour plate of Lenny. While I was processing them, uh, they were shot digitally first of all, um, I realised that some outtakes would look good in black and white. They felt it had a very classic feel, uh, it's not the way I normally shoot. Um, they looked like something that I would see in my dad's old photography magazines when I was about 10 and I always used to wonder how they were shot um, so it's a bit of a nostalgic shot I guess an unintentional nostalgic shot uh, reasonably serendipitous on a day because um, Lenny turned up wearing a fisherman's cap I didn't request that uh, he just looked good and everything worked it's one of those days it's a quick shoot a cold shoot um, but we were very lucky. I think it's one of those shots that I, I actually very proud of. So I hope you like it too. And I will see you at the exhibition. Hi, I'm Leslie Banks. I live in North Glasgow, where I also have a studio. I studied at Glasgow School of Art in the drawing and painting department. And since then, I've more or less painted full time while bringing up a family. I tend to work in themes, working across several paintings at once. This painting, Slumber, which has been shortlisted for the 2022 Scottish Portrait Awards, is part of my current theme. It is inspired by family visits to Loch End Chalets at Lake of Monteith, sometimes with the family, sometimes just the two of us. My husband Mark, or my muse as I jokingly refer to him because he's appeared in quite a lot of paintings recently, he's the subject of Slumber. He is captured sleeping, shoes and hat off, Newspaper and binoculars discarded. The artist is often the observer rather than the subject. However, I am present as a shadowy reflection in the window. There is a lot of my favourite things in this painting. Reflections, windows, figures, patterns, still life and landscape. I am interested in the way a reflective surface can create an illusion of reality. My name's Rick Booth. I'm a photographer based up in North East Fife. And I'm really chuffed that I've got some work included in the Scottish Portrait Award exhibition, which will be travelling around Scotland in the coming months. This is David on summer solstice 2021. He's taking a turn around the block in the gloaming. This picture is part of a bigger collection of work that I've been shooting on the so-called Road to the Isles, um, also known as the A830, if you prefer. Uh, kind of Scotland's answer to Route 66, maybe? It's a rambling, meandering, ponderous look at homeland because it's based on this song about walking home. The road passes by Glenfinnan, which is where the Jacobite standard was raised and where concrete Bob McAlpine has built his viaduct. It passes along smooth Tarmac Adam, funded with a little help from Brussels and onwards towards the sea, which is where the, the ancient sea routes to distant lands begin. 
this song, The Road to the Isles, has been really massively popular in Scotland in the kind of first half of last century. It's, um, it's been a real big deal throughout the whole Scottish diaspora. And what's the subject of the song? It's, it's simply a story of walking home. The venerable Billy Connolly has a version himself, slightly different in flavour. I've been retracing that homeward journey described in the song and celebrating ordinary lives, no matter what colour of brolly we want to stand under. I'm really pleased that the image of David is continuing its journey around Scotland and in such fantastic company as well. Thanks to the Scottish Arts Club for making it happen and Sutherland Independent as well. So thanks very much. Cheers. Hi, I'm Simon Jauncey and uh, music and photography have always been passions in my life and although music has definitely been one of the reasons for my getting up in the morning, um, I've actually made my living from photography. Um, I've been a freelance professional photographer for 35 years. I cover all kinds of different areas of photography, principally these days, architecture, interiors, people, landscape, and a process between music and photography is, for me, is very much the same thing. They both come from the same creative space. As far as photography is concerned, there's a, a story about how I met John Black which uh, resulted in the photograph which has been shortlisted for this year's competition. So every year for the last five or six years, a group of us have um, congregated on the north coast uh, in a house on the north coast of Scotland. And that was where I met John. Um, I was immediately fascinated by him because his story is quite unusual. He was uh, an electrical engineer at the Long Gannett Power Station and decided one day to jack it all in and uh, went to Peru and studied how to become a shaman, which he, he has done. He's come back and he now practices um, shamanic rituals, uh, natural healing therapies. And um, I've always wanted to take pictures of him. And this time being up on the north coast of Scotland with you know, the wild sea and the wild landscape, it did seem the perfect place to uh, put him into his element and see if we could get a, a picture that spoke about who he is and what he does and what he believes in. Um, so that was that was really how it all came to be. And um, fortunately, we got one shot that combined all the right elements. Hello, my name is Jack Visser and I am a pyrography artist. So pyrography is using heat to create imagery, either on paper or wood or whatever your chosen surface would be. I like to use paper and wood. My process for doing the, the art is, I am actually a fashion and portrait photographer. Um, so I like to go out with the models, take photos specifically for doing art later and also with the model's permission, of course. So the piece that I've entered for the Scottish Portrait Awards is called Tia, which is also the model's name and it's also just a really nice name, you know. And uh, when I showed my mother it, she said it reminds her of the girl with the pearl earring, which I didn't know existed at the time. And yeah, lo and behold, it does remind me of the girl with the pearl earring as well. Except in this case, I've drawn a Africa earring in gold, which wasn't actually in the original photo to begin with. I've just sort of added it later just because it looks kind of cool. But yeah, so the way I got into pyrography it has been in my family for generations. So my, grand, my dad used to do it, his brother, uh, and my grandmother, and I'm sure there was many others. But there was this one time I was hoovering my parents' house when I used to live there, and... I came across my dad's old pyrography tool and I, I thought, well, I'll give it a shot, see how bad can I be? It turns out I wasn't that great, to be honest, but it, there was something about it, you know, I just, it hooked me. The smells, uh, just, it was very therapeutic for me. So I was hooked by that first one and I kept going and going and practicing and just getting better and better. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Rona Campbell Crawford. 
Um, I'm 21. I live in Creef, Perthshire. I am by no means a professional photographer, but I am an agricultural student. My main passion in life is my beloved horse and the general outdoors, working on farm, working with sheep. I have my own flock of 13 sheep at the moment. So a lot of my inspiration for my work is basically my everyday life and capturing that as I'm going along and completely unposed and, you know, unplanned, just whip out the front and take a picture. It captures things that are just unforced and are really naturally beautiful. So apart from Buddy being a subject in my photo for the awards, the other subject is my best friend Andrew. Andrew also shared the love of the outdoors. He was a full-time gamekeeper, so he spent a lot of his time in the hills and working with deer ponies. Had a lot of shared interests that way. When I was out with him, I got to capture a lot of images of him just in his element. Andrew was the type of person that never wanted to be photographed, so <laughs> to have these images is really special for me. My entry for the Scottish Portrait Awards is bittersweet because it is the last time that I saw Andrew and the last time he visited. He actually very, very tragically took his own life only a couple of weeks after the image was taken. So it is a truly beautiful but also truly heartbreaking photo. To be able to share it, I think, is uh, an honour and to have it in the exhibition um, is really special. Andrew's family and I support the Canmore Trust, which provides a safe space for those struggling with mental health issues. Hello, I'm Craig Jefferson, and this is a painting of my son, Douglas. I'm Douglas, I'm 10 years old, and my dad painted this painting of me. For me, it really has a feeling of you, Dougie, in it. It's um, just the look on your face is that kind of, you, you do that kind of look to us quite a lot, so I feel, you know, feel like I got something there. Is it different painting me than a model, than a model? Yeah, because because you're my son, I look at you every day, and um, because I've got a really close relationship to you, so uh, yeah, it's very different. Why did you choose these specific colours for the painting? Well, some of the colours are, are kind of exactly what I see, but then when I start painting, I start um, playing around with what colour, what one colour does to another. So I get really um, excited by, you see over there, the yellow and the, the kind of lilac -y colour together. So when you put them together, they, they kind of um, make each other sing. And uh, it's the same with the orangey, warm kind of orangey colours and the cool blue colours. They, they react against each other and make the whole painting kind of glow. And uh, that's what I love about colour. Is it, do you know when your daddy's painting? <laughs> yeah. Why? The faces you make are very funny. Yeah. Mm. What kind of faces do I make? You go out to us. <laughs> As a 12 year old, I started visiting the Frick Collection and the Metropolitan Museum of Art every weekend in New York City. I imbibed all that beauty 14th and 15th century Italy. French neoclassicism, but I was always captivated by the three Vermeers at the Frick and five at the Metropolitan. I had prints on my walls of the lace maker, the girl with the pearl earring, all that I could find. For decades I thought, because of the beauty of his time, beautiful rooms, beautiful tapestries, clothes and instruments, we can no longer create beautiful genre scenes as we now live in a cheap throwaway world. But three Christmases ago, I was watching my daughter do a puzzle under an Ikea elbow lamp in front of cheap hand-me-down curtains, a woman in a room doing something very everyday. Suddenly I thought, yes, I can make a 21st century Vermeer with stillness and sweetness in the timeless air, but in an Ikea world. It's just how much love, care, and craft I put into it. In this drawing, I became convinced that I could create the next girl with the pearl earring, a new Mona Lisa for our time. A presumptuous intention, but a nay really bod one, you must admit. Who knows what beauty is, or what it could be? In 1881, Girl with the Pearl Earring was purchased for only two guilders, 
plus 30 cents buyer's minimum, that's around 25 pounds at current value, as it was wholly out of fashion. Now, visitors stand in long lines to get a chance to see this small picture, and its resale value is beyond comprehension. Who knows what is beautiful? 25 pounds for the Mona Lisa? Hmm. My name is Sermon. I'm an artist living and working in Scotland. 2013. I'm at the mountain resort of Murray in Pakistan, acting in a TV series based on a novel, The God of Small Things. I see this old man on the set with mesmerizing eyes. I point the camera at him. The Murray man looks at me. He poses. The camera clicks. And over time, I keep returning to this photograph over and over again. But I'm not sure why. 2015. I'm on a week-long retreat in Scotland. And during meditation, something shifts in me. And I turn to art. I start learning how to see and observe through the medium of drawing. 2020. COVID happens, locked in, I start drawing the Murray Man. As soon as I began, he reminded me of someone, someone of whom I had a faint memory of meeting as a child once and never again, someone from another lifetime, like a fantasy, unreal. And I realized this someone is my granddad. My granddad was a sailor. I had only seen him in old family photographs as a typical dreamy kid, I used to read voraciously and imagine myself being a stowaway on a ship, transported to these distant lands, having adventures of a lifetime. And I always felt that I missed out on my granddad telling me his stories. Now I had him in my sights again, as Murray Man, reincarnated as my grandfather. As I drew intensely, he spoke to me of his adventures at seas and mountaintops. And through this dialogue, we started creating new memories unspoken, unlived, but so real to me. And it felt like he had missed me as well. By the time I finished the drawing, without a doubt, there was a new feeling between us. Feeling of being reunited, feeling of having real memories with him. Proof of a life I hadn't lived, but somehow it felt like I had lived it. I'm Andrea Thompson. I'm a portrait photographer in Edinburgh with a focus on families, small weddings, and small businesses. I picked up my first camera when I was seven and have loved taking photos ever since. This year I decided to give myself a portrait project and I called it A Portrait a Day in the month of May, mostly because it rhymed but really just to keep things interesting. I started off photographing people I didn't know well or at all, but as the month went on I also ended up shooting some family and close friends. I'm absolutely chuffed that two of the portraits from this project have been long listed in this year's Scottish Portrait Awards, and one has been shortlisted. My shortlisted photo is called Mark Thorne, Thorne Records. I didn't know Mark, but he just opened this gorgeous record shop and I popped in to see if he'd be up for getting his photo taken. A few days later, I popped in again unannounced. The photo I took captures exactly the vibe I was going for, a bit modern and a bit nostalgic. I was only there a few minutes and Mark was a really good sport despite kind of being ambushed. In the mid 1990s, I began Catching the Tide, a project documenting the last salmon net fisherman in Scotland. Over the subsequent dozen years, I've had the privilege of travelling across the country, meeting and photographing some of the most interesting, insightful and knowledgeable men whose livelihoods was also their passion. Over the years, I built up a huge collection of images which forms a unique record of an industry which is no longer with us, with a government ban on netting wild Atlantic salmon being in place since 2018. One location I visited during the early years was Armadale, a windswept netting station perched high on a cliff overlooking the Pentland Firth. It was the domain of James Mackay, who fished his bag nets with his son and his father, to see them out in their coble emptying the nets was elemental and exciting. After a gap of nearly 20 years, I returned in 2021 to photograph James at the disused station. Although it was sad to see the place abandoned, with the equipment, nets and poles now obsolete, he reminisced about the good times we'd shared, him fishing and me photographing, 
it was a happy occasion. In May 2022, James passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. It was a huge loss to his family and community and to me too. The portrait I made of him will live with me forever. My name is Kira Burns and I'm a photographer based in Inverclyde just outside of Glasgow. I've recently completed my HND and photography at college, which is where I took this image behind the mirror. The image was taken for an assignment which encouraged us to be creative and think outside the box to something a bit different than your average portrait. I decided to go with an abstract idea of hiding the subject's face to add that little bit of mystery into the image. I planned to go to Rookin Glen Park and when the day came the weather was horrible of course being Scotland so we only had about five ten minutes to shoot before we got soaked. The editing of the photo was my favourite part. Having the ability to make a photo look completely different through Photoshop is amazing. The edit of this image was where it all fell into place. I added together both the shot of the subject holding the mirror and then the subject out of shot and just the trees. I used the mask tool in the mirror to make it look as if you were seeing behind the mirror and adding that bit of mystery that you don't see a face, you just see the trees. After taking this photo, I decided I wanted to make this concept into a series, try more different styles and looks of people, all without a face. One of my favourites so far being the footballer. Now I graduate, I plan to continue my photography journey by becoming freelance. I plan to continue all different styles of photography, including one of my favourites, portraiture. Hello, my name is Nicola Urbani and I'm a 21 years old photography student at Edinburgh Napier University. I originally come from Italy and I'm about to go on my fourth and final year of my bachelor degree. The work I'm about to talk about is a very, very important and precious image to me that I have taken as part of a project that I created for university. The project is entitled Mystica Glamour, which is the name of a drag queen that I decided to document. I met Mystica at a coffee shop that she co-owns herself. I was looking particularly for a drag queen to document for my project and she was up for it immediately. We started doing shoots together and it felt like we were a team already. I didn't even have to direct her much because she was just very happy to dance, to move around and to be photographed by me. This is the image which I submitted for this competition. She is wearing this beautiful flowery dress and this amazing handmade hat. Mystica styles herself and does the makeup as well herself. Therefore, what I wanted to capture with this photograph is the essence of her character, namely a very extravagant, beautiful and mysterious drag queen. Hello, my name is Jamie. My dad took that picture of me at the window with my T-Rex. He took it with a Holger lens, which makes it look really old. I like to go out to take pictures of my dad. I like to take pictures of the sea and islands. My dad takes pictures of stuff with a big camera. And I take pictures of stuff with my iPad and my GoPro.
Hi, my name is Drew Thompson. I'm a portrait artist uh, living in Glasgow, where I also work for my home studio. Um, I usually create portraits in uh, oil paint or colour pencil, and I often combine the two mediums. Um, I usually create the uh, colour pencil portraits on quite a small scale, um, but for this year's entry to the Scottish Portraits Awards, I wanted to kind of push what I'd done previously with, with the medium and create a, a life-size drawing. So I decided to do a drawing of my son, Finn, who's four years old. Um, Finn had been out in the paddling pool on a very warm and breezy day. And when he came out of the paddling pool, he wrapped a, a towel around himself and he just stood there for a while looking into the distance. And it just gave him this almost heroic look. It looks like he could have been posing for a, for a movie poster. Or that he was dressed as like a, a Scottish Highlander. And the subject really appealed to me for a couple of reasons. One being that children his age have probably spent half their lives in, in a lockdown um, and maybe haven't had a great deal of recognition for it. So drawing him especially life-size with, with that um, with that kind of powerful look, um, I thought it they would, they would give them some sort of recognition. Um, and I felt the kind of choice to do it in uh, colour pencil was appropriate as well as colour pencil is often the, the kind of go-to medium for for uh, children that age so that made it feel really appropriate too. It's obviously a big privilege to be part of the the shortlisted uh, exhibition um, and I hope everyone gets a, a chance to come down and, and view everybody's work. My name is Gregory Rankin and I'm an artist based in Glasgow. Last year I spent my time working in smaller, more intricate works. So working in these drawings was a real palette cleanser. I enjoy making marks with rubbers and charcoal, smearing and scoring in a real physical way. This is a portrait of David. David is a very old friend of mine who I've socialized with and painted over many years. With this portrait, I wanted to capture David's restless curiosity for life. He's been an actor, he's been a DJ, he's also been recognised as a reincarnated Lama, and he is an absolute hoot. And oh, what a face. He's an absolute delight to work with every time. And he even made some of the charcoal that I've used to make this drawing. Hello, my name is Maria Hirsidi and I am from Cyprus and all of my projects are related with Greek history and mythology and for the Scottish Portrait Awards of 2022 I participated with this picture which is called Dysmorphia which derives from the Greek word dysmorphia which means bad shape and I was inspired to create it from body dysmorphic disorders which is a mental health problem that many people suffer from it, and especially teenagers. It's a health problem that basically people find flaws in their appearance, and it gets in their way to live normally, that they get so overwhelmed that they even sometimes think of suicide. And for this photograph, it's also a wake-up call to people to feel confident and not get brainwashed by social media. And as you can see on my picture, uh, it displays a male, a young male, in a black and white picture. And he stares at the camera on my lens, and he feels exposed. He's not afraid to show his flaws. And it has a high contrast. And you can only see the top part of his face. And I was truly inspired to create it as I myself have suffered at some level as a teenager from body dysmorphic disorder and I was looking at people on social media and thinking why I don't look like that. But as I grew up I realized you don't have to be perfect and that's what I want people to feel about and think of themselves that everyone has something that they don't like and that's what makes them unique. Thank you so much. My name's Rachel Drake and I'm a portrait artist based near Lanark. 
I decided I'd want to work um, in charcoal and I wanted to do a, a drawing. Um, this was a bit of a change for me. I don't usually work in charcoal, haven't used it for many years. So I really enjoyed working on a larger scale and a much looser style. The drawing is of my son, Christopher. I was out with him one day for a coffee and I actually happened to just take a quick picture of him and I caught him in the mood, caught him unawares really, um, looking really pensive and thoughtful. It was, it was as if he was, one minute he was with me in the room and then in that split second he wasn't, his mind was elsewhere. And this is what I wanted to capture about him because he is a very thoughtful person. I've painted and drawn my both my children many times in the past, but Christopher had no idea that I was doing this portrait. Uh, so it was a real surprise. I didn't tell him that I'd entered it from the competition. Um, and when I phoned him up to tell him that it had been picked, he was absolutely amazed and he was so excited um, that he was going to be a model um, for a piece of artwork. So he was delighted with that. I worked with a couple of mediums in this piece. I worked with charcoal, but also graphite pencil. I started by doing his face and the facial features and the details in pencil first because I wanted to still retain the, the details which are a bit harder to get in charcoal. I hadn't tried this before where I put charcoal over the top of the graphite drawing um, and it worked really well. I still got kept the detail of the original drawing but it gave it a sort of a, a slight mystery to it, um, a slight haziness which I really liked. It really softened the pole portrait and then the rest of the portrait was worked in charcoal um, and I really enjoyed getting really messy with it, being much more loose, not worrying about the details of his shirt and things like that. Normally I'd be quite detailed in my work, especially with my watercolours. So this was a nice break away from that for me. It's something that I would definitely want to work again with in the future. Hi, I'm Tanya de Villiers and I'm a photographer in Edinburgh. In 2020, I fell ill with a rare neurological condition called neuromyelitis optica. Um, over the course of a week, I lost mobility from the waist down and in my left hand. I woke up one morning and life as I had known it had ended. Before getting a diagnosis, I didn't know what it meant I didn't know if it would continue to spread and I didn't know if these were the last days I had with my family. It was a terrifying time and an incredibly painful time, um, but I was determined to capture this portrait. With restricted mobility, I had to struggle to set up the camera. Um, I used a remote and captured a few shots. It was difficult and took a huge amount of energy so I only have a few images of that time. When I look at this image, I don't see something um, ugly or pessimistic. I see something of incredible hope. At a time when I felt like I had lost everything, I could only hold on to what I did have. The incredible medical care I got, um, the support of nurses and doctors and physios, and the strength and courage and support of my family. Illness has an amazing way of refocusing one's priorities. Everything changes, your perspective changes, things that were important before no longer seem to be so. For me, this image is not only a reminder, um, but an image of hope and of gratitude, of light in the darkness. Oh